As the creative mind behind some of Hollywood's most groundbreaking movies, director Alfred Hitchcock has long been considered one of the most influential figures in cinema history. From Hollywood A-list journeyman filmmakers like David Fincher to genre veterans such as Joe Dante, the Tinseltown elite never shy away from acknowledging Hitchcock's influence on modern storytelling. So to honor the recent anniversaries of two of his genre-defining classics, we decided to bring you a special dossier on a visionary director who changed the face of an art form. Later during the show, we'll be joined by a Hitchcock scholar to deeply analyze his works. But first, we'll start off with a career examination of this brilliant auteur. After rising from the lowliest ranks of the production department, filmmaker Alfred Hitchcock dramatically changed British cinema once he sat on the director's chair. The visionary artist combined his unique camera work with lighting techniques and camera angles he borrowed from German Expressionism, which helped him invent a new cinematic language. Heightened by his sense of editing, which lent an edge-of-the-seat feeling to his movies, Hitchcock at the same time modernised the English thriller. Have you ever heard of the 39 Steps? The positive reaction from moviegoers and satisfying box office receipts allowed Hitchcock to apply this winning formula to different genres of film. With the espionage tale The 39 Steps, the successful director updated the then tired romantic thriller and instantly elevated this kind of film from B to A grade. And the plot structure of this black and white classic is still used as blueprint for Hollywood features today. Now. After being wooed by Hollywood for a long time, the box office gold craftsman made his Tinseltown debut with Daphne du Maurier's cult novel adaptation, Rebecca. This David O. Selznick project proved that Hitchcock was equally talented at class-oriented social commentary as much as he was at creating suspense. The motion picture still unsurpassed for suspenseful romance. Have you planned your vacation yet? You have a choice between sand and sunburn. In the eve of the golden age of travel, Hitchcock set his sights on the action-adventure hero, find a tasteful little murder on every guided tour. using cities and their landmarks as characters. The veteran artist created travelogue-esque entertainment for the masses. Wanted for murder on every front page in America. Along the way, his film North by Northwest influenced the ever-enduring travelling spy franchise James Bond. Well, I ain't about to kiss off $40,000. Critics and scholars agree that the master of suspense's most prominent production is the sleeper hit Psycho. Oh, we have 12 vacancies. With this 1960 character study, Hitchcock risked alienating his core family audience. But he ended up giving birth to several different, highly successful horror movie movements in the 1970s and 80s. When combined, these facts alone can be labelled as a testament to his everlasting influence on cinema. Is anyone at home? Oh, that, that, that must be my mother. Norman Bates' mother has been dead and buried for the past 10 years. Alfred Hitchcock started making films in the early 1920s and kept producing classics with mass appeal until the late 1970s. Following his retirement, studios started rehashing Hitchcock's masterpieces in the hopes of cashing in on his earlier success. They recruited talented directors who described themselves as loyal followers of the veteran Englishman. But this often caused great controversy, dividing both fans and critics alike. And now, we'd like to share with you our favorite of all the on-screen homages to Hitch ever made. In 1998, filmmaker Gus Van Sant shocked the movie world with his literal remake of Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 thriller Psycho. The film is a shot-by-shot, angle-by-angle replication of its predecessor. Critics argue Van Sant's aim was to prove that Hitch's filmmaking techniques were way ahead of his time. Commit murder? So I'll leave you alone for 30 seconds and you elope with a younger man. 
Stephen, my God, I had absolutely no intention of anything. Coasting off the buzz of the late 90s Hitchcock revival, a perfect murder's goal was to duplicate the success of 1954's Dial M for Murder. Tax free. Just for walking away from her? I said tax free, I didn't say free. But in the end, this Michael Douglas star vehicle ended up being more associated with the modern passion thriller Basic Instinct, due to its lead actor's roles in both movies within the same decade. Sooner or later, your husband will be wiped out. A non-stop adventure combining baffling mystery and thrilling suspense. Now you have a good sleep. Trying to shake off its famous horror movie studio image, Britain's Hammer Films took a stab at reimagining the seminal espionage tale set on a train. Despite being one of the sober Hitchcock remakes, constant production problems resulted in the film being labelled a cliché. If there really is a conspiracy, we better figure out who's in on it and who isn't. That eerie sensation that you've seen a stranger before. Brian De Palma is a filmmaker who's widely agreed by cinephiles to be a true Hitchcock descendant. The New Jersey native is known for directly lifting camera angles, themes and music from the master of suspense's movies. De Palma's own update of the psychological thriller Vertigo was seen at the time of its release as an original free adaptation. What was she like? Elizabeth. She was very much like you. Quantity of debris is consistent with the size of a vessel. The least known among the Hitchcock rehashes is the television production Life Pod. Based on the lesser known 1944 survival film Lifeboat, this production holds a unique place among fans for reviving Hitch's story in a science fiction setting. Life Pod is now within range. Retrieval procedures. As we just saw, Hitchcock's forward-thinking vision has remained alive through the work of other artists he influenced. But to fully appreciate his appeal and understand the groundbreaking nature of the late filmmaker's work, we're now joined by actor and writer Richard Burnip. He regularly lectures about the legendary director and organizes tours that explore London's cinematic landscapes used by Hitchcock in his films. Thank you so much for joining me today, Richard. Now, what do you think was Hitchcock's biggest contribution to cinema? Well, that's a, an interesting question, and, and it's, a, it's a difficult one in a way because he made many important contributions, but if you were to sum up something that w we know was very important to him, it was the fact that by moving the camera, he could move us as an audience. He could create incredibly emotional effects of fear and shock and many different things by his control over the camera. Uh, not, not for a trick, but to actually have an effect that draws us closer to the characters, makes us actually care about what's going on in his films. Well, like we mentioned, one reason why the Hitchcock spirit is alive today is because a lot of active directors still prefer to use his bag of tricks. Why do a lot of films that are being made today feel the need to borrow elements like camera angles and plot devices from Hitchcock's movies? That there's an awful lot to choose from, and I think sometimes people do it deliberately, and sometimes it's just because it's become part of the language of cinema, um, and because it works. I suppose that's the other thing. There's a thing that Hitchcock does in a number of films. He does it in Psycho, he does it in North by Northwest, he does it in Frenzy, for example, where the camera suddenly goes up high above the action, um, you know, to, to a, the, the apex of a, of a room or something like that. And we're looking down on the characters, usually at moments of, of real tension or, or a dramatic shift or, sit, or that are going to make us terribly uneasy. And that's something that isn't necessarily borrowed consciously, but it's used because it absolutely works. Well, among movie lovers, there are also those people who prefer to watch the original Hitchcock motion pictures rather than the ones influenced by him. Can you explain the reason why audiences still respond to Hitchcock even in this day and age? I think Hitchcock's films, the classic ones, the, the ones where he's working in his, the genre that we know him best for, so the suspense films, they're so brilliantly constructed 
they're so carefully put together and for much of the time he's working with the top people in their fields at that particular time so in British cinema in his talkies in the in the 1930s when he does six thrillers in, in quick succession he's working at you know, one of the best studios in Europe he's working with people who are outstanding writers art directors cameramen and the actors who were the best that he could get and the same thing happens when he goes to to Hollywood so he he works with some absolutely remarkable people film composers and, and so on and I think that's one reason that people go back to the Hitchcock films because he, he's assembled this extraordinary team that he just trusted to get on with it um, actors often said to him can you give us some feedback while he was working with them and he, he would say well only if I need to um, that he he wanted the right people and he got them and then he just let them get on with it to an extent because he'd already planned out so much of what he was going to do. Well Richard thank you so much for giving us that insight on Alfred Hitchcock. That would be great Th thanks ever so much thanks thanks for having me along. <laughs>